give it up for the girls full figure, figure. Dicky, dicky, dick, 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 dick. Bad bitch just walked in the room. Oh yeah. Everybody in this bitch gotta make more. What's up, you guys? I'm back today with another vloggy vlog. So. I've been up since like 5 o'clock this morning. Don't mind me if I look tired. Today is a work day, an on-site work day, okay, for catering. I figured since I had to be on-site that I would take you guys along with me. I haven't done that in a while, so today you guys are going to be coming with me to work. Okay, so it's super early in the morning. It's raining out here, lightly. It just really started raining, and... Uh, that's what we about to do. So we're about to go cater a 70th birthday party. Okay, so usually I just drop the food Keep off. But today... But today I have to set up our sh uh, charcuterie table. They ordered a three foot charcuterie table. So of course I have to go there and set that up before their event starts. So that's where we're heading now. And yeah. You're all caught up. We working, y'all. <laughs> I'm always working. But I'm grateful. I'm blessed to say that I'm always working, okay? And good morning, Papito. Good morning. It's your boy, Jake. I know how to do it. You look a little sleepy. You look so jolly. Uh, you know me early in the morning. 0.1 miles. Turn right. I love you. I love you too, honey. So we have McDonald's. Ronnie needed to get some coffee. And we're about to share... Um, a steak, egg, and cheese bagel. We get ours steak, okay. egg, and cheese Maybe bagel up. with a scrambled egg instead of folded. Um, nacho. Extra sauce. Yep. Would you like to run Madonna House Charity? Sure. Okay. It's just a little uh, rainy out here. It's early, huh? To get this, and then we're gonna head out, get on the road. Why am I whispering? <laughs> shamrock shake is good. I hate that. I don't like the shamrock shake. I'm a, I don't like the mint kind of stuff. To me, it tastes like toothpaste. Are you like, you know what though? I like, um, I like, what is that called? I like Andy for the food. Mm -hmm. Money, the window's on your side, boo. I'm giving you cash. So, um, I like Andy's chocolate sometimes. And it's this other one. It's called Peppermint Bark. It's like white chocolate with like crispy, crunchy peppermint pieces. I'll eat that. But anything else, peppermint, tastes like toothpaste to me. Like York peppermint patties, ugh, never. Sham York peppermint patties are your favorite? Oh, yeah. I haven't seen you eat that in forever. Them, they got those in Dollar Tree. That shit tastes like toothpaste. Shamrock sh shakes taste like toothpaste. Mint chocolate chip ice cream. Blah, blah, like blah. Flurry. Blah. It's so gross. It tastes. Uh, you got. I. Blah. Are you a mint person? Do you like mint taste? Mint kind of stuff? Or are you like me? Do you think it tastes like toothpaste? I got my hair net on. Yeah, y'all really got, they really come to work with me. Like, all oh, this real shit. Like Stop saying that. Ronnie calls this the Shaeja. This is not Shaeja. This is literally a Dominican uh, when you get your hair wrapped. I got this from the Dominican salon when I got a, a washing set. He calls this the Shaeja. A kufi. A, a kufi? <laughs> yeah, let me know if this looks like a kufi or if this is just... this. I know it's a Dominican hair wrap, but... I'm not. I I don't think kufis look like this. Not these big with the big openings. The Earth used to wear those. The anyway, Earth used to wear those. I'm in my natural days. state. Well, I mean, I did like super light makeup today. I have eyebrows on, and I concealed under my eyes. I have a tiny bit of blush, and I have lipstick on. That's it. Okay. Enough, just so I don't look like I'm super tired. Anyway. They need to come on now. I don't know what else to say. Yo, the dogs be mad when we be leaving them. But we, like, I can't take them to work with me. I mean, they can't come with me every single place I go. They just so used to always being with us. Mm -hmm. But we've been in our house now for like a month. It's okay for them to be left alone now. 
you know at first i was worried because we had just got there but now they asses can stay home okay they can't come with me when i go to work anyway so they have no choice but um yeah we be, we be getting out the house we be fighting with them we this should be crazy one day i'm gonna film it this that's harlem yo harlem is the youngest but he is freaking a beast Oh, why they yelling? Oh, they turned it up this early in the morning? Oh, and I got my camera rolling. What's going on? She's screaming at that lady. What happened? It's about to get nasty over there. I got my camera rolling. What? That This lady done left and went down there? Yeah, yeah, she done. Oh, yeah, she done. Ooh, something happened. She on a... Yo, how ironic I'm filming. What happened? They turned it up this early? It's yeah, too early yeah. for this. <laughs> Iced coffee with extra syrup. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be thirty. I'm doing apple pink. Oh, that's why you gave me the cash. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they turn it up here. Thank you. Thank you. You too. You remind me of Bella so much. Yeah. Huh. Listen, especially people, the the people that uh, vlog when they at work, like on the low, they get a lot of views. I mean, as long as you don't get in trouble or nothing, yeah. you know. So, just do it. Don't wait until you get the right camera. Don't wait until you get the right lighting. You, use your phone. If you got an iPhone that's already shooting in 4K, just do it. Just do it, girl. Oh, she's stuck out there. What she was mad about? Um, she said, okay, so she had ordered two sandwiches. A meal and then a sausage uh, biscuit. Mm. And then, it's a bundle, so it comes with the hash brown, but no drink. But the meal comes with the hash brown. And she was like, oh, I want a, like, an extra hash brown on the side. So mm. it was like three in total. And she, and like, she didn't answer, so I was like, I'm guessing it's three. And then, um, she had a, a coffee, and she was like, okay, so... That was right, so I, but I guess it wasn't right because she got to the window, started I mean, like, screaming. Like I confirmed it with her, so mm -hmm. it's too early like, for this. And then she was like, she's like, oh my god, these people at McDonald's are so stupid. And I was like, wow, oh. wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. I tell you, no type of respect. Like, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it's definitely too early. For it's this too person. early for this. Like it's early. Uh, that's crazy. I always say that you can really know a lot about people by how they treat uh, hospitality people. Their servers, so that. It's called My Full Figure Life. What is it? My Full Figure Life on YouTube. Yep. You always can tell how, the real how people are by how they treat their hospitality. We got um, uh, vanilla coffee um, and a steak bagel meal. All right, I'll be back, yeah. That car just had, that lady is refusing to move. Oh, it's two cars. What the hell's going on? You too, thank you. I'm telling you, I just said this. You really can tell a lot about people by how they treat hospitality staff. Their waiters, their porters. Yeah. yeah. And a vanilla coffee. Their porters. Like, people that have to, like, cater to you. People that, you know. I mean, if you think about it. Thank you so much, you too. If you think about it, just because, even though I um, own my... To stuff. Even though I own my business, I'm a business owner. My business is technically in the hospital. Huh? Okay. My business is technically technically in the hospitality. Because, you know, I provide a service. That's good. Yes, sir. 
and people think like because they pay for your service or because you have to do stuff with them sometimes they treat you nasty even though I've had people pay me I mean you know people pay me thousands of dollars for catering I've had some events when the, the person was a little rude to me right Riley mm. the people are rude people feel entitled um, you know, I do catering, so of course, what comes with food is people drinking. There's been times when we had a couple of our clients be drunk and, you know, be a little snappy, snappy out of line, okay? And that, it comes with it sometimes. Everything is not perfect. Everybody is not perfect. But how you conduct yourself matters, because seeing as to how I'm the owner of my business, Depending on the situation, you know, I can't really clap back like that. I can't be like, bitch, come outside. You know what I mean? I can't, I can't do that, you know? <laughs> but, you know, I could write me a little stern email. I could, you know, properly get them back in line. Like, um, excuse me, uh, that is uncalled for. I know, I, I know how to deal with it. You know what I mean? But that's all I'm calling. It's early in the morning. It's too early in the morning for that. She said, oh, that's why the people at McDonald's are stupid. You work at McDonald's because you're stupid. That's very uncalled for. And that puts bad energy out into the universe. Because karma will always make you pay what you owe. Okay? And nobody's exempt from it. So what you put out, you get back. And more times than one... You get that back in three folds. So you put good out there, it comes back to you times three. And you put negativity out there, it comes back to you times three. So be careful what you do, what you say, and most importantly, how you treat each other. I'm sorry, I don't think these thing egg and cheeses is how they used to be. But anyway, they still okay. So this is how we get it. My hands is clean. I just literally just washed my hands. So that's the scrambled egg. The steak is there at the bottom. Yeah, I'm about to break this in half. So, I'll be back. My half. events photo archives let's get it here's our space three feet they're paying by the foot three feet parchment goes down first
I always bring a trash bag, even if they have some. Don't overwhelm their garbage with yours. Bring trash bags. So as I'm getting set up here, I'm letting you know I'm going to be doing some voiceovers in and out here in this video because of course I was working. I couldn't really... You know, I'll be talking loud and explaining what I'm doing. So, you're going to be watching me, and then I'm going to be coming in and out, talking to you and telling you what I'm doing. So, how I like to set up my grazing tables is I like to start off with, um, of course, first I measure. They're paying by the foot. They paid for a three-foot setup, right? So, I measure out three feet. It's going to be three feet in length, and however wide the width of the table is, you know, as long as it's, you know, a normal standard, I think is the table widths are two feet. I think it's like six by two or something like that. So I measure it out, lay out my parchment paper. I like to do a couple layers of parchment paper just to protect the table, you know, because some of the fruit and I use honeys and stuff like that you don't want it to see through make sure you use parchment paper and not wax paper okay that's a big tip right there don't use wax paper always parchment so I lay that down the first zones I like to do is the things that I have the most quantity of so whatever I have the most of I like to do a couple of zones of that so for me, that was the pinwheels and I believe uh, celery. So these are some pinwheels I made here. Um, I did a clip of them. So these are some tortillas, veggie cream cheese, black forest ham, some roasted peppers and stuff that I made uh, pinwheels out of. And uh, I'm starting my first zone. Uh, I'm doing two zones of the pinwheels here. Um, I think I have some clips. I should be adding in clips of what the pinwheels look close up. So, you guys, I didn't realize that uh, a piece of the parchment paper was, like, in the view of what I was doing. Because, of course, I have the camera facing towards me without the viewfinder out. Because, you know, I'm working. I can't really be looking at that. I thought, you know, it's going to, I'm going to fix it in a little while. That's actually the top of the container. Oh, now that I see it. I thought that was parchment. But I'm just, I'm doing two zones of pinwheels, okay? So, like I said a little while ago, when you're doing catering events, no matter what kind, bring your own trash bags. Because even though they'll probably have trash cans and stuff like that, you don't want to overload their garbage with your garbage. You don't need them to see exactly what kind of items you're using, you know, to make their stuff. Bring your own trash bags and take your trash um, with you. I have a catering kit. When you do catering, you should have a catering kit as well. Inside your catering kit, you should have trash bags. You should have um, a clean dish sponge, uh, a small thing of dishwashing liquid. You should have some gloves. You should have some, um, some Clorox wipes. Um, one of those little small handheld broom and dust pants that you get from Dollar Tree, like the little small, small ones. Uh, you, of course, you should have some band-aids. You should have some um, disinfecting spray, sanitizing spray, as well as um, the gel, the liquid. Um, what else do I keep in mind? Um, about that, you know, mine, I have matches, lighters, extra sterno, um, just stuff like that, you know, I know I was supposed to be doing, like, a catering 
ebook or workshop. But you guys know I've been super busy. Um, but yeah, always take your catering kit with you. Sanitizing wipes, antibacterial spray, liquid, um, some tape, some band aids, some matches, some trash bags, um, your business cards. Always have some business cards to put on your tables, even when you're dropping off your food. Uh, for me, some extra sterno. I said matches, but matches are very important because that is the one thing. That it's easy to forget that will stop your whole show because you gotta like them chafers for, to heat that food up. Um, but this is a cold setup, so I'm not really worried about that. But always keep that kind of stuff in your catering kit, okay? So now I'm doing a zone of cucumbers. I mean, cucumbers. Obviously, that's celery, right? I'm gonna, you know, just twin both sides of the pinwheels with celery on both sides. Then after that, I made some little caprese skewers on uh, some toothpicks. So it's grape tomatoes, mozzarella cheese blocks. Um, I did some zesty Italian dressing, marinated the mozzarella in that. And then it's topped off with some Italian seasoning. You don't see that yet, but you're about to see that. And when I put it on the screen, I'll actually do a close-up to it of it. And, yeah, this is, like, it took me, like, an hour to set all this stuff up, so. I'm gonna try to talk in and out, keep you guys entertained while I'm doing it. I might speed the video up in some parts because, y'all. I added different kind of decorations to here, fresh flowers and stuff. And natural stuff, you know, rocks too. So, right there, as you see, I'm using a little bit of the, um, celery flowers, the fronds that are on top of the celery that you usually throw out. I took a couple of those and decorated the celery with. That right there is the um, little caprese skewers that I was telling you about. Let me get a closer pick of this for you so you can see what they look like close up. It's simple, something simple, but it's not super expensive to make a, um, a bunch of, okay? So you want to mix highs and lows. You know, packaged goods with some fresh goods, with some homemade freshly made stuff, homemade stuff. You just got to mix it up your charcuterie boards and your grazing tables, okay? That is the trick right there. You know, just have a big array of different things on your tables or your boards. All right. So as you can see, the things that I have the most of, I did I did twin stations. So on the left and the right, it's the same thing: pinwheels, caprese skewers, and celery. Then everything else that you don't have as much of, that's where you fill in the gaps and you know scatter around the table. If that makes sense, I think that makes sense, right? So that's how I do it. Next, we're going to do dry goods. Crackers, crostini, stuff like that. You want to do around the perimeter and then some in the middle. Okay, as you're doing it, you'll get it. Just watch how I do it. No, because Jill made that. I don't I want Jill to let her be. Okay. Okay, so I laid down the crackers. I just skipped that part because, you know, I was literally just laying out crackers. Right there, you see I have round, like, Ritz-like crackers. In the middle, those, those are club crackers. Now I like to put the cheese and dips in the middle. Only because a lot of people go for those. And you don't want those around the outside because, you know, they could fall off the table. Or people got to reach over a bunch of stuff just to get to them. So I'm putting that block, that big round you see in the middle that's goat cheese that's like four logs of goat cheese that i molded into one with some plastic wrap then those rounds um those are brie that i'm gonna dress the top with and then i'm gonna add some cube cheese stuff like that um you'll see it in the video but you know this is a pretty lengthy video so i figured I do not show you what I'm doing. That right there is a Manchego cheese wedge. Um, yeah, you want to have an array of different stuff. You want some goat's milk cheeses, some hard cheeses, some soft cheeses. 
um, some cheeses that aren't super weird that people know. Like, I have a different array of, like, sharp cheddar, mild cheddar, the mozzarella on the skewers. You just want to try to have something for everyone. Um, yeah. So, right there, you see the block. That's mild cheddar. And then I'm going to probably add some more to that. I am going to add more to that. On the other side, you just want to have cheese all around that middle part. Okay? In the middle. Not too close to the outside because you don't want it to fall off. Alright, I'm going to fix that. You'll see. So right here, I'm adding in some hummus. I have a roasted garlic hummus and then a red pepper hummus. You just want to have different kind of things on your grazing tables. Of course, if you're doing a small board, it'll be way more downsized. But for, you know, this is a pretty big three-foot table, okay? So I have two, putting down two things of hummus. Then to go with that hummus, I also have some, like, pretzel thins. I have some pretzel rods. So whatever you put down, make sure you have the accompaniment to go with it. Okay, and try to put those close to it. Next to those, um, the hummus I put down, I'm going to put the pretzel thins. You see me putting the pretzel thins right there, right next to the hummus. You know, just so people know what to use what with what. Even though you could pretty much use whatever with whatever. But it just flows better that way. Right here, I'm filling in the outside corners with my crostini. I made the crostini myself. I went and got some um, take and bake French baguette rolls from um, French baguette loaves from Aldi, a couple of them. And I sliced them to about half inch thickness and I toasted them in the oven until they were nice and crispy. And then I just let them sit in the oven with the oven off and just let, let them dehydrate some and dry out. And they make the best crostini. So that's what I'm putting there. Um, yeah. So now in the gaps is where you add your more pricey items, like your meats and stuff. So right there I have some seasoned sliced deli turkey. Um, that's what I'm going to use to like fill in the gaps, my different meats and stuff like that. Because they cost more, so you just want to bunch them up in the gaps. Um, yeah, so I'm using turkey. I have prosciutto. I have some smoked sausage that I sliced up. I have, of course... A bunch of um, salami roses that I made. You know, you want to just have a variety. I know I keep saying that, but just have a variety. So right here, I'm filling in some gaps. I have a couple pounds of pepperoni. I don't think I said that before. Yeah, I also have pepperoni. You just want, of course, have a variety. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. I'm just filling in gaps now with our more expensive items. You know, the items that I have a list of, just putting that all around the table. Okay, you're seeing it from this perspective. Of course, at the end, I'll pick up the camera and show you close up so you can see exactly my placement of everything. So, yeah, I had like two pounds of pepperoni. So, that's why you see a bunch of it still going down. So, you know, just filling up all those gaps. Make sure your grazing tables and charcuterie boards are nice and full. 
Okay. This right here that I'm putting down is a smoked beef summer sausage. I buy the logs, I cut them up, cut them into half circles, and then cut those into half. And then I seasoned it. It's all about putting your special touch on the items. You know, don't just take things out the package and put it on your board. Add something special to it, some fresh thyme, some fresh herbs. You know, season it. Of course, when you use the smoked stuff, watch your salt levels. You don't want things to be salty. But it's all about just making things special. So your items that you don't have a lot of, like here, I only had a pound of strawberries. Right now, I'm taking the strawberries and I'm just scattering them out in different places on the grazing table. So that's how you do it. You make big stations of what you have the most of. The lesser items, just scatter them around. Of course, make sure you rinse and dry off your fruit. Don't have your fruit sitting in water. It makes them all messed up, okay? Rinse them and dry them. And just make sure they're nice, okay? Those are some nice, fresh Florida strawberries. Yeah. Really yeah, good. If you know in Florida, this is like uh, strawberry season. The strawberry festival is about to come, I think, in the next couple of weeks. So right now, the strawberries are super sweet and super ripe. So I made sure to add some to my board because they're really good right now. Thank you. So I have a couple of big gaps. So there I'm adding my grapes into um, a few of those big gaps. You know, just trying to fill the spaces. I don't want any open spaces. I want my grazing table to look full and lush, you know. They're paying, <laughs> you know, per foot. So you just want to make sure it's nice and full. So right here, I'm adding some fresh, sweet mini peppers, mostly closer to the hummus because I think that will pair good with the hummus. But you know, there's not that many, um, much, that much room next to the hummus, so I'm just gonna scatter the rest around the table. But I'm gonna focus to try to put them mostly by the hummus because I just think it will pair the best with that. So now I'm working on filling in the bowls. Um, I'm adding in some mini dill pickles. And then on the other side, I have some jalapeno garlic stuff uh, olives. That's what I'm putting in that one right there. In the back, I'm going to add different jellies. I have a strawberry preserve and also a raspberry preserve. So now I'm adding some packaged vanilla whoop whoopie pies. Um, or is it moon pies? What are they called? Whoopie pies or moon pies, whatever. So it's about mixing pre-packaged to fresh, highs and lows, homemade to packaged. Like, you just want to have a mix of all that. I also dip some um, Oreos and decorate them with different sprinkles. Like, I just have a whole array of things on this uh, freezing table here. So right here, I'm dressing the brie. Brie complements yeah, better with something there sweet. There so first, I um. I pour yeah. some honey on top, and, which one and then have? I like to top that. I use a dried cranberry candy pecan um topping that I get from Walmart. People usually, I think it's actually a salad topper, but it goes so good with the cheese. 
And I'm also drizzling that honey over the goat cheese because, of course, honey goat cheese is so good. It always, it, it's just so good. It just pairs so good together. So right here, I'm filling up um, some of those bowls with the strawberry preserves and raspberry jelly. Make sure that you bring with you um, a couple of uh, packaged forks and spoons just for setting up. We all have them in our car. You, you know, we have them everywhere. It just helps, you know, because you don't want your gloves all sticky and stuff while you're touching different things. Of course, I think I changed my gloves a couple of times, but still, just, you know, try to keep things as sterile as possible. And then when you're done using the package forks or something, you just throw it away. Where did the boys go? So now I'm just working on just filling in gaps. I have some pretzel rods. Um, my grazing table is looking pretty full right now. You see how we went from a, big, a blank space to now look at how full this is looking. So I just like to just group items together. Just make it look nice and neat, yet not perfect and rustic. I mean, it's just a flow I like to go with. I, look, I just like to get comfy and just wing it and just go with the flow and put my grazing table and boards together. So from this angle, you can't really see it, but I have like some Scottish uh, shortbread cookies that I'm putting around the table. I only have one box of those, so of course, like I said, lesser items, you just fill those spaces with and just put them around your board so you just have nice little things everywhere. I also have like a small bag of Hershey uh, nuggets. The wrap can't do not put unwrapped uh, chocolate candies on your grazing tables or boards. Use them with the wrapped ones. Good quality because you know when you see that Hershey's, I use Godiva wrapped chocolates. I use sometimes Dove wrapped chocolates or Ferrero Rocher's. Something that's good, high quality. You don't need a lot of it, but when they see that little you know, piece of chocolate here and there. They see it's high quality. It just adds to your board and makes it that much better. So I'm adding some chocolate pirouettes. I um, only have one package of those, but I'm just putting that all around the board because it's just something that's like a little special, you know. So um, I just have one pack of them. I'm just scattering those. Not scattering, placing them around the board just so that you... Your eye, just every time you move your eye, you just see something nice, something good, something pretty, you know, all around your whole board and grazing tape. So now that my board is pretty much full, I keep saying board, but my grazing table is pretty full. Now is when I like to add in my salami roses just to make it look that more lush and just so that it doesn't get, they don't get buried under the other stuff because you take your time to make the salami roses you want them to pop out you want people to be able to see them because you know they're pretty and there's a lot of meat in these to make this amount of roses this was five pounds of salami so each row each salami rose has about i'd say eight to ten slices of salami when i'm doing these um and taking them with me, like when I know I have to do a table, a post, of a board, and I have to transport them, I just put one toothpick in the bottom of the petals just to keep the petals together. So yeah, that's what I'm doing on putting on the uh, salami roses. I would say maybe right here, y'all. It's in two weeks.
my grazing table is almost done. I'm just adding the finishing touches. Right here, I'm adding it on the uh, chocolate covered Oreos that I made. I just dipped some Oreos and some Hershey uh, melts, and then I topped them with some sprinkles, some chocolate sprinkles. And um, the other one, I did a cookies and cream one. And it just adds like a little special touch. Everywhere you look, you see something special, something nice. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just filling in all the little gaps. I don't want to see any of the parchment paper peeking from the bottom. Any place where I see a, even a little inch of parchment paper, I'm going to fill it with a cookie. Or, you know, just... I don't, I just want it to be full. I want people to get what they paid for. <laughs> she's, now she's got little forks here. Should we just put these away and use those or do you want these? Either way, because some people might want bigger ones, some people might want bigger ones. Okay, so I'll put like half and half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half and half. Okay. I like these small ones. I know, I don't care. <laughs> so I, I got those as a. Back up. This is like. Uh, this is like so right here, my client was talking to me about um, just the little serving forks that we're serving with the board. Of course, you have to supply that. I supply the small napkins. When you're doing charcuterie or grazing tables, you want to do cocktail size napkins, also cocktail appetizer size um, plates, and then the small cocktail size forks. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So right here I'm doing my finishing touches. I'm adding my wrapped chocolates. Like I said, I'm doing a Hershey, um, I think it was a cookies and cream Hershey signature nugget, something like that. It's a, it's a nice high quality, good quality chocolate. Wrap chocolate. Don't use unwrapped. I know I already said that, but don't do it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just putting my finishing touches on. What I like to do, my little special little touch is if there is like any space left, I like to take like um, Crunchy Munch or Fiddle Faddle, like a good high quality, and I put like little handfuls of um crunching munch around the table in different places right here i'm just putting um some knives some butter knives into the brie and the goat cheese walmart has a four pack for a dollar 75 so you buy it with their budget and of course there's no problem leaving it with them it only costs a dollar 75 for four of them so uh yeah that's what i'm doing i'm just doing Thank my little you. finishing touches here Hello? Hey, can you bring me a stack of business cards on my purse? Okay? Okay, thank you. So I had to call Ronnie and ask him to bring me some business cards in because you definitely want to leave some business cards when you do grazing tables, when you do your Thank charcuterie you. boards, when you package them. Just put, you know, a business card. I put one on top with like a thank you sticker. Here, my last little touches, I'm laying out my prosciutto. Prosciutto, you know, it's expensive. You don't get a lot. So, you know, any little open space where it's not touching anything, you know, I just put a clump of prosciutto all around the board I had about a pound of it two packages so that's what I'm doing here just pretty much just doing my finishing touches it's almost time as you can hear by the you know people in the background people are starting to arrive they came a little early I like to set up at least an hour before the event starts people came a little early so it was about you know I'd say about half an hour before people were supposed to come but they already started showing up so it worked out because I'm pretty much done. You know, I'm just doing my little finishing touches. And I'm going to set up the 
napkins and plates and the little cocktail forks and I'm pretty much done. This place, the um, this is a historic archives where the event is. I'm done. I took out the trash. Always clean up. I stepped on some popcorn here. I'm gonna ask them if they have a broom. Clean it up, and then we good to go. Look. I think I think it. I think it's beautiful. Always leave some business cards. All right, let's roll. Okay, time to roll. I am legit mac and cheese now. Me and Ronnie sitting here having a debate because I want to go get rice and beans and chicken. He's talking about mac and cheese. When I make so many pans of millionaire mac and cheese, I'm just mac and cheese out. Just like when my Cajun Alfredo went viral and everybody ordered the Cajun Alfredo. I mean, I'm grateful. I'm like Alfredo out. <laughs> I mean, I was then, now. Sometimes I make it for us. I mean, I was alfredo out but you know what yesterday the day before yesterday i grilled some chicken on the grill and i'm thinking i'm gonna take the leftovers and i'm gonna make um some homemade alfredo and i got these like fresh raviolis like freshly made ravioli and i think i'm gonna make alfredo with the, the grilled chicken and the um ravioli if i make it y'all see but anyway I'm mac and cheese out. I don't know if it's because I'm Haitian or what, but I prefer rice and beans and salad and meat over like fried chicken and mac and cheese and stuff. Like I'm black, of course. I'm, I'm black either way, but it's just my preference. I'm just mac and cheese out. Ronnie thinks I'm freaking crazy. He doesn't even like rice. If in order for him to make rice, to like rice, I gotta put a bunch of butter. I gotta make a peel off. I gotta make some gravy. He doesn't like rice. I'm American. What does that mean? Anyway, we about you make eat rice about cooking, and you eat rice when I do stew beans. But you just don't like it when I make the bean gravy. Anyway, I think I did good on my event. I think my charcuterie table looked beautiful. I'm proud of myself. Um, we're about to go check on the dogs because they've been by themselves for like four hours. This is like a little bit later where i had to do my charcuterie table was like an hour away from me it took an hour to get back then i had it took me like an hour to set it up so we're gonna check the dogs and then i'm gonna go see my homegirl my homegirl opened a restaurant a dominican restaurant and i think i'm gonna get rice and beans and i think i'm gonna go to the store and get the heavy creams the half and half so i can make the alfredo later for dinner so let's go and Ronnie, you gotta put together that um, that uh, bed frame for the guest room. So I go legit hear the dogs on the other side of the laundry room crying because they hear us coming in. Turn the light on. Did I show y'all my new um, washing and dryer came? I got the Samsung Steam. Oh, no. Uh, no, don't let them jump on me running, please. My legs, my legs are running. I got the Samsung oh, Steam. No. Samsung Steam. All right, stop. Ah, y'all. Okay, okay. I know, you got a pee pee, Lulu?
Go ahead, go pee pee. All right, so it is much, well, it's a few hours later. I got the dogs. And they whining, they mad because they're tethered because they try to jump in the front seat. So, gotta lock them down, okay? So I'm about to go ahead to my friend's restaurant. I'm about to go ahead to my friend's restaurant and get um, something to eat. I'm hungry. All I had was that half a bagel this morning. And I'm ready to eat. <laughs> Just got here to my friend's spot. Oh, it's so cute in here. Okay. <laughs> hey, I finally got to get down here. <laughs> it's beautiful in here. I'm good. This is morning, y'all. <laughs> Tell me you still got pork chops. Yeah, I have pork chops. Okay. I ran out of chicken. Okay. <laughs> I ran out of chicken and I have pork chops. Okay. Oh, okay. I got you guys. That's what I want. You want some um, ketchup? Uh, yes, yeah. You got more of the pineapple cake? That's gone? Uh, <laughs> I even got to pull some cakes today. Oh, really? What? It was gone. Thank you. Thank oh, you gosh. Me. Wait, so I, what you got? This full of cake. Really? Before I even... I oh, you got that lima feel. She makes the best desserts. Best Dominican food. Right? Okay, Which I one is this one? one? I think it was all oh, on the line. I got a Munchello. Both of these? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Support your friends. Even when they do what you do. Uh, so three, three lunch. Oh, okay. And then she has two lunch, one lunch. And then it's three lunches. Okay. Uh, two chicken. With the breaded or just? Yeah. Two chicken. And then, um, yeah. Hi. It smells so good in here. It's so cute in here. Thank you today, and then I'll Oh, I'm getting the behind the scenes tour. Yeah, she makes the best freps. So good. Behind the scenes, so you got your your stove. Okay. Have a freezer here, and this is all the other part. Well, we have the oven. I don't know if you use the oven. We have the oven here. Okay. Okay. People think it's tiny, but it's worth. Listen. Ooh, look at that. Steaming hot. That looks so good. Mm hmm. Thank you, Morena. You guys come see her right here in Winter Haven. Okay, across from the armory. <laughs> oh my gosh, if y'all could just smell how good this smells. Mm. I'm about to tear this up. This season so good. Mm. Wow, so in the latest news, I ordered a box spring from Amazon. And the first picture looked like a regular box spring. I didn't bother to look at the other pictures. And uh, this is how it came. Ronnie has to put it together. You got this, boo? <laughs> Yo, it could, the listing could at least say um, assembly required. The dogs is outside in the rain. It's raining out there. Oh. Man. Step 10. The old 10 steps <laughs> You got this, though. I have faith in you. 
Wow. It's pouring out here. <coughs> the dogs. I gotta find something. We put one of those rattan mats out there and they still tracking. Look at it. You see the flow? We gotta find out, find a better solution for this with them. I don't know. Because we have to Swiffer and mop every five seconds. Shout out to Amazon. You see that one right there? That is better than a Swiffer because you see that um, well thing right there? It comes out and you can fill it with your own cleaning solution. And it has the washable pads at the bottom just like a Swiffer. See it? Love it. I'll link it in my Amazon store. It's bomb. <laughs> so here is dinner, you guys. Of course, I had to make something for Ronnie. He doesn't eat pork. I grilled some chicken on the grill the other day. I used to leftovers made a homemade Alfredo. Nice and cheesy with some fresh ravioli. And this was dinner tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to do you, boo. Bye, guys. Don't slip up or get Why not, man? I'm coming for that.